I really wanted to talk about um, who you are, where you're from, what your interest is, uh, the, this project. I, I know that um, that we met through the Doug Henning project. Right. Right. right? So uh, I guess it was Neil McNally. He's the guy that runs the Doug Henning project. Sends out that regular email. And he sent out an email and he, he told us about what you were up to. And I thought it was really interesting. So I know I wanted to learn more about it. I thought the people that, that, uh, that watch my YouTube channel might want to learn more about it. Uh, but just real quick, the, the Doug Henning project was started by Neil McNally. I'm going to put the links. Uh, when I post this video, I'll put the links below so people can access that. I'm not sure everybody knows about it, but it's a tremendous resource. Uh, I, I think you mentioned briefly you were a, a Doug Henning fan. Absolutely. Uh, let's get right into it. Uh, I was actually, I actually saw his Broadway show when I was a boy back in the early 80s. So I go back with Doug Henning. I saw his show and that, at that point I was already a fledgling young magician, but seeing Doug Henning cemented it. My mother noticed there was an interest. So she took me to see him. And what I liked about Doug Henning between seeing him live and, of course, his now famous appearance on The Muppet Show, which uh, you may remember for those of you who grew up in the 70s, was the absolute positivity that he absolutely radiated in his act and really in his life. He lived as he, as he presented himself, as an agent of wonder, as an agent of kindness. So that registered very deeply for me. And perhaps that's what led me to the Doug Honey Project Online during difficult times to seek the comfort of the wondrous and the kind and the familiar. And that's what led me to the Doug Henning Project on, online. Uh, it's been a long time since I've practiced magic. Having children of my own led me back to it. So I started teaching them tricks. They're now six years old. They produced a 20 minute magic show. We have a video of that. That was absolutely spectacular. Uh, and I didn't want to stop there. I knew that I always wanted to teach magic in schools. I'm a technology teacher at a Brooklyn public school, but I also teach special ed. And I started by having some people contribute magic tricks to us. Jim Stott, who was a terrific guy, contributed several magic kits, as did Phantasma Magic. So I have a, a, in, my, uh, in my classroom, in the closet, there's a bunch of magic tricks that I've begun teaching my own daughters and soon other kids. And I'm going to take it a step further. I want to really, really ramp up magic in the schools. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, I, I'll stop there. I don't have any other specific questions. I'm just curious, uh, following back up on the show that you saw, which show did you see? Did you see the Broadway show or was it another show? Oh, no, this was the Broadway show. Okay, the this Broadway was very show. much the Broadway show. Was this, uh, in fact, it may well, go ahead. Was this before Doug got his first special? That's an excellent thing. I'm pretty sure it was after because he'd, been as, he'd established himself as a name. Uh, he'd been on television. I remember the Muppet Show cameo prior to this. So at this point, he'd established himself. Uh, but it was definitely the Broadway show. I know that was the venue we went to. Well, you're very uh, fortunate first... to have seen him live. I, I, I lived in Baltimore. I grew up in Baltimore. Uh, as far as I know, I'm sure he came to Baltimore at some point, but I was a teenager. I didn't have the wherewithal to get to him if he came. Uh, but I saw every show that he did on television. And I became a fan of his through the, the television specials. But you're right. I, I don't think there's ever been a more positive energy force in magic before or since. Doug Henning. Absolutely not. At, at this point, uh, for the viewers who might not know, Doug Henning was more of a magician. There were two uh, enterprises he embarked on most people do not know about. You probably do because you're a fan. He did make an unsuccessful bid for Parliament. Now, there's a loophole in Canadian law because he's a Canadian citizen, you're technically allowed to run for British Parliament because it's actually a commonwealth. So he did actually run prior before he died uh, on, I think, their equivalent of the Green Party. So he was a politician. And the other thing was a bit of an entrepreneur. He had in mind a theme park with a New Age basis, a, new, a theme park based on spiritual growth emphasizing magic. It was one of the most uh, greatest projects ever heard of, uncompleted before he died tragically. So he was much more of a magician. He was a force for positivity in many other ways. Uh, the Maharaj, Parliament thing I just discovered. Maharish Vida Land. Isn't that what it was called? That sounds right. I believe. Okay, yes, yes. I believe that sounds Maharaj right. Maharish yes. Vida Land. I don't know that he ever completed it. I don't know what happened to it. Okay, so he didn't complete it. 
No, huh? no, he didn't. Yeah. I know he had big plans for it. But yeah, I mean, Doug, I was a magic fan and a magic practitioner before Doug Henning. Uh, my own influences were a local magician by the name of George Goebel. And then, of course, the Yogi Magic Mart with Phil Thomas. Uh, so I was involved in magic before, but I was a teenager when Doug hit the scene. And he completely changed magic and completely changed my life. I know a lot of people will argue, and I agree with them, that up until Doug Henning, magic was in a bit of a decline. Uh, you had basically birthday party magicians, but you didn't have one central figure driving magic as a force <clears throat> the way you did when Doug Henning hit the scene. And arguably, if it hadn't been for Doug Henning, we might have David Copperfield or Lance Burton or any number of other uh, big name performers because <clears throat> he really blazed the trail. Now, of course, you had Milburn Christopher before Doug and Mark Wilson and a few other performers. But what was so significant about Doug was the way he brought his culture and his personality into the performance. And that really changed the way people perceive magic. So it's uh, the Doug Henning project can't be missed. But you were talking about uh, the, the email that came out mentioned that you were doing some things in classroom. You said you were a, uh, what kind of a teacher? Yeah, let's get into that. Well, I have been teaching special education for 16 years. I now teach technology. And in fact, like Doug, I took the cue to use this craft of technology, not just for entertainment, but for therapeutic purposes. I use robots and I use apps for kids to meditate or for kids to express social emotional truths about themselves. Uh, I, use, I won't get into that because it's not so much about magic, but that was Doug's influence to use it for a positive therapeutic purpose. And now like Doug, I want to use magic toward the same end. Uh, what I typically say, and I'll give you my two minute speech, technology and magic are basically hand in glove. They're like this. And I say that because, and this is what I always say, the root word of technology, techno means craft in Greek and logos means art or the word or expression. Technology is nothing more than using a craft or a skill to express oneself. And that is magic in its essence. So there's a lot of common ground between the two. And it's based on that that I'm teaching magic in schools. Uh, I want magic to be taught here, not only because kids are learning a skill and a craft and the requisite self-discipline that comes with that, but there's logos, the word, the expression. In any performance, and especially magic, and especially with what Doug did, something is being communicated. And in Doug's case, that something was incredibly positive. I want our children here to have the same resource and the same needs that Doug showed us so many years ago. And we can get more into the specifics in a moment if you want. Now, the, the, the children that you're talking about, are they all special needs children, or, or are they... What, what is the characteristics of the kids that you're teaching? Excellent point. No, they're not. I'll explain. I teach technology typically, and I teach every class between grades one, two, three, four, or five. That is gifted, general, and special ed. I teach everybody. This year, because of COVID, we're working uh, at half capacity. The building's not fully open. So because I have a special ed license, now I'm teaching a small group of special ed kids. Okay. And this year, they would be the target ground zero audience for my experiment of getting magic in schools. Kids who communicate in different ways, kids who need an outlet, kids who need the positivity, and I can work in small groups. So it's actually a perfect time to start this project. What are you, what are you looking for from the magic community? How can we support you in what you're doing? I'm glad you asked. Uh, what I've been, there's two ways you can do it. Uh, one is I am looking at a curriculum right now called Discover Magic, and I have a sample of it with the lessons and the materials, and it's terrific. I want to be a licensed, certified Discover Magic teacher. Now, there is a cost involved with getting certification. They're doing it online. So right now, there's a COVID special where it's pretty much half price. I plan on putting up a Kickstarter page, hopefully, do some fundraising. And I would love it if everyone in the magic community, once I post the link, look at it, post it, repost it, contribute if you can. I mean, obviously it's so a, a little bit like a GoFundMe page, maybe? Well, it's precisely like that. Kickstarter is exactly the same thing. Kickstarter is a crowdsourcing 
uh, thing. Uh, so that's one way to tell. Another way, of course, is if you have old magic tricks you want to donate to our school that the kids can play with, or you want to just do a Zoom magic show, I'd like to post my information out there. So those are two ways you can help. Uh, I'm really, I just started putting together the Kickstarter page and I applied for a grant to become the Discover Magic uh, presenter. So knock on wood, hopefully that works out. And I hope to have the Kickstarter page up and running within the next week or so. I just want to make, get final approval for my principal and then off we go. And what kind of magical effects are you looking for as far as donations? Things like, for example, really? pla plastic ball and vase or, or uh, things like that or really? something? Well, we'll accept anything that is accessible to a, an elementary school child. That's not too difficult to uh, perform. I'm de-emphasizing sleight of hand illusions because some of our special needs kids have coordination issues. Uh, and I'm focusing more on classic tricks that I have in my own repertoire, save a dove pan or a milk pitcher, something that's reasonably uh, self-working, but that it still requires the children to put some thought to how to present it how they're going to demonstrate it, how they're going to provide it. Simple tricks are great. Um, and one person was kind enough to send a uh, book he wrote of simple tricks you can use with household objects. You know, anything is welcome, basically. If it's accessible and it's going to work with a child audience, we're fine with it. That's great. Okay. I don't want to put on too many more parameters because somebody might pleasantly surprise me with something I've never even thought of. So I don't want to say it has to be X, Y, or Z. Right, exactly, exactly. All right, so I guess there are a few links that I'll, I'll need from you so I can put them when I post this video. If you, yes. have, you, you don't have your page up yet, but as soon as no. you do, if you could feed me that link, I'll pass it on. And uh, also contact information. If somebody's interested in reaching out to you, what is the best way to do that? The email that I sent to you is the absolute best. Just, uh, I, I always check it several times a day, I will get a, I'm very good with turnaround. If you send me an email at my school address, which is lholman2 at school.msc.gov, odds are you'll get an answer within a couple of hours. I'm always, because I'm doing tech support, lots of things, I'm almost always viewing that email. So I'm now the text, de facto tech support guy here too. So I'm always checking messages. You'll probably get a response within a few hours, if not the day. Right. I'm usually pretty quick. Okay. So, just to follow up on something, you you went to see Doug, uh, uh, and I don't want to ask your age, but I guess you were a, a child when you went to see Doug. I don't mind you. I don't. I don't care who knows. I'm going to be fifty in April. I mean, okay. I, okay. I, don't, I don't care what people know. Um, so you had to have been pretty 10. young. I was ten. You were ten. Maybe nine. Okay. Well, I was young. I was young. Was was yeah. that was was Doug show what got you interested in magic? Well, no, no, uh, it's like I mentioned earlier in passing, I was already into it. My mother noticed it and encouraged it by taking me to see Doug Hannon, which was great of her. She was always, and is still, very supportive. Um, at that point, I had a magic kit that I was playing with that included some of the classics, like the famous dice in a, um, you know, the dice trick, dice in cube, cube where you, you read the dice, somebody puts the dice in and you yes. tell them what number it was. The Siberian chain escape where you, uh, Shake Your Hands and Escape, that was my favorite. Uh, there was, what else was there? There was a Siberian Chain Escape, a couple of the classics, the, uh, the Foam Rabbits. Anybody who's seen a magic kid knows what I'm talking about. A Siberian Chain Escape was my favorite. So at that point, I'd read a child's biography of Harry Houdini. And by the time I'd seen Doug, I was already sort of delving into the names. You mentioned Mark Wilson, I, I remember his show. I, I did used to watch him. Uh, so I, I'd already had some exposure, but Doug, as you said correctly, was an absolute game changer, shattering cliches and offering nothing but sunshine. Um, there, gone was the stifling image of the man in the top hat and the white gloves and the wand. This was, I knew even then, this was a game changer. Uh, I wouldn't see a game changer like that since. I can think of two offers I've seen since that I think have really changed the course of magic. Um, we can get into that if you want. Mm. No, who, who, who are I you can, thinking of? Well, after him, there are only two others. One, one of whom, again, I was allowed to see. I was very lucky. Doug Henning was the first big change, game changer. For me, the next one, and people will debate this, but love him or hate him, Penn and Teller did change some of the rules of the game. Oh, they I saw did. that three times. 
Big time. Sure uh, then I saw live, I saw them live three times actually. Once was Broadway, uh, once was off Broadway, and once I caught them in Boston. And in fact, we, they, we talked a bit. They, they were very accessible to their fans. I still have the autograph shirts. Um, they were a game changer. I don't think I have to explain why, uh, unless you want me to delve into that. No, I, I appreciate, uh, I, I went to see uh, uh, Penn and Teller several times when they came to Baltimore before they really took off. I mean, now, I, I think what they're doing for Magic now is, is almost a new renaissance. Uh, they're really bringing it back and they're giving people opportunity that might not other, otherwise have opportunity. So they're doing great things for Magic. And, and I appreciate them very much. But one of the things I like about them is, is their attitude toward Magic in general. They do great magic. They do original magic, but they don't take it too seriously. You know, it's kind of, um, they understand it's a performance art. They present it as a performance art, but they have a little bit of self-consciousness about that. It's none of that, uh, you know, I, I'm a magician and I, I fool you thing. Um, so I, I really appreciate that. And I, I think they've had a great influence on me too. Because I mean, I specialize in mentalism, but I approach mentalism the way they might if they were mentalist. And, and by the way, uh, Penn Gillette is on record saying he hates mentalism. <laughs> and I know why, you know, because, because mentalists tend to take it a little bit, um, take themselves a little seriously, which, which Penn Gillette really doesn't like to do. Um, so, but, but you can have fun with mentalism just like any other branch of magic. So, I have to confess, um, it's, I haven't delved much into it, I have to confess, but I, that's because I play mostly children's magic shows, so I, I, I haven't had much call for it. I respect it a great deal, I just haven't done it so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the other one, I should mention, there's a third person who I think is now the future of magic. Uh, I don't know if you know him. Um, have you heard of Mario the Magician? Who? Uh, Mario the Magician? Um, I, you know, I'm embarrassed to admit that I have not heard of Mario the Magician. Ah, okay. So I get the pleasure of telling you. He is the next step. He's a step in magic that I predicted was going to happen. You know how I said I teach technology and I love technology? Yes. My prediction that I made before Mario made the scene was someday there'll be a magician who understands the Arthur C. Clarke quote that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, that magic and technology are one, and that he'll use technology as his act. Here we go. Mario the magician is someone whose act is based on and revolves around technology. He builds robots that he uses in his act. He actually shows how they're built. Uh, the robots are part of the act. I've never seen someone blend, seamlessly blend technology and old school magic before, but I predicted it would one day happen. This guy came along and I finally was able, I felt validated, honestly. I was able to say, see, this is coming, I told you. So now mag magic and technology are in blend at a time when we have the next generation of potential viewers who might be jaded because they can Google the, they can Google any solution to things or they can look up anything. Here's a guy who's not fighting technology but made it his ally, who's using it as an agent of wonder. And again, I think technology and magic are kin. And this guy proved everything I said was happening. So look it up, Mario the Magician. He's already made a name for himself. I almost had him at my school. In fact, it's a funny story. He and I are kind of neighbors. He lives at a town near me. But he ended up getting the opening slot on David Blaine's tour, and now he's just, he's just going places. So that's a name to look up. Uh, I will, I will take a look. I, will, I appreciate the reference. Uh, you know, I, I didn't know we were going to be talking about this. Otherwise, I'd, I'd done the research. But that's okay. <laughs> if, if, you study, if you study the history of illusions, now illusions being defined as a big trick that a human being fits inside of. If you study the history of illusions, uh, some historians, namely Jim Steinmeier, reference uh, an illusion that was done, I'm, I'm thinking it was around the 1700s. Uh, somebody built this um, machine. It was presented as a machine, as an automata that could, that could play chess. Actually, <laughs> it, it was a cleverly designed box that a person could hide inside of. But uh, it was considered the first illusion for that reason, but it was presented as technology in the court. You could actually play chess with this intelligent automata. Um, so it's, it's interesting now, here we are, uh, 2020, 
and we're talking about Mario the Magician and his marriage of technology and magic, and you go all the way back to the start of illusions, and that's kind of where it began. I was aware of that. Thank you. It was, it was presented as technology. Huh. So, uh, yeah, very interesting. Well, again, the Arthur C. Clarke quote applies any sufficiently advanced technologies indis indistinguishable from magic. I suppose it's vice versa, too. Any magic that's really good might be indistinguishable from an advanced technology. Uh, I did not know that. That's interesting. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Huh. That history, there's, there's a huge tomb on the history of magic called Simply Magic. Jim Steinmeier is one of the editors, and that story is actually in that book. Uh, What's I, the name I, of the book? The name of the book is Magic. It's big. It's a big, uh, uh, actually, you can get a smaller version, but it's beautifully illustrated. Uh, it, it's um, Jim Steinmeier is the editor. I think it might be Magic Works, Mike Cavaney's group that put it out. Uh, I've actually reviewed it on my YouTube channel. If you scroll down through the videos, you might see it. And because uh, I, oh, I have okay. both versions, I have the, the sort of the coffee table version, which is gigantic. And then I have the smaller mm -hmm. version, which you sit down and read. Um, but there's a lot of great history in there. And that story's in that particular book. Um, anyway, funny. listen, Lee, I, I appreciate your time. Uh, I'm going to put your email address in the information below the video and hopefully people will reach out once I have your, um, I know it's not called a Kickstarter. Fund, your, your fund me page. Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Kickstart. I'll, I'll put that down there as well. Is there anything else awesome. you wanted to, uh, to relay to people who might be watching? Oh gosh. Well, I, I hope those people who are watching when they get the Kickstarter project going understand that the reason for this project is just like Doug Henning told us and showed us, Doug Henning was a man who offered wonder during tumultuous times. I like to think I could continue at least a fraction of the work by doing this. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Well, I wish you the best and thank you so much for joining me and uh, we'll be in touch. Yeah, and I'll get you that Kickstarter. I just need my principal's approval. I already started it, I just have to like, if soon as she says yes, I'm just going to finish it up. I, I could, if I get yes from her today, I can. I hope to get it done by next week. I really just want to get it out there. Well, whenever it gets out there, I'll make sure that the link's put below the video. Spent Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Have you a so great much. day, Lee. Thank you. Thanks for joining. You too. Me. All right. Thanks a lot.